Now, accountants can never be looked down on if the uh, aim and purposes of the country are to be achieved. It plays a vital role, that's the profession, in the development of economies and contributes efficiently to the development of uh, some business organizations. Accounting remains essential to the world because financial statements are communications that fuel the investment decisions that drive the economy. They find themselves at the front line of safeguarding the integrity of financial reporting and defend the quality of financial reporting reporting right at the source where the numbers and figures are produced. A fellow of the Chartered Accountant Accounting Certification and Training Institute and the rector, uh, it doubles as the rector of the Federal Polytechnic, Ilaru, Dr. Mukai Aremu Akinde, is here live in the studio for us to understand these issues. Did I get the name rightly? Thank you so much, Doc. It's good to have you. Thank you so much, Tolu. <laughs> you got it so rightly, Dr. Akinde Mukai Laremu. Yes. I happen to be the sixth rector of the Federal Protank in Kilaru, Ogun State. Not only that, the sixth chairman, I can in Laru and District. Okay. You are very correct on that and all it's that. It's, it's very perfect. It's, 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 all right, then. Great, great stuff. I'd like to start this way before I go to, because we're definitely going to talk about funding education. That is something that came to my mind when I first saw that you're coming on the show. But let's start with issues around the profession. How well do you think accountants are fed in the country? You have a big role. You saw my introduction. Tell us some uh, what you're doing, where we are, and where we ought to be. Uh, accountant has major roles to play in this administration, especially on the fact that uh, we are talking about revenue generation. You know that government, just like uh, every individual, need to generate what you are spending. And government as an institution need to generate money through taxation to fund the budget. Of course, you know that uh, as we are, uh, if I want to say the economy is a bit sick, why do I say sick? You are operating on the fact that uh, we have high inflation, not only high inflation, we also have high, un high unemployment, meaning that uh, we have stark inflation. Uh, to address that, uh, we needed to look at uh, our tax revenue to see how we can fund the budget properly. Not only that, to, uh, I heard the other uh, the speaker talking about uh, taxing the people we might not really tax the people, we might decide to look at the new object of taxation, expanding new income to, be, to, to, to tax so that uh, revenue will come up. Uh, at the end of the day, the budget will be financed properly rather than going through a budget deficit. You know, the budget deficit uh, is not something that is good. And of course, for you to really generate taxation, you must grow the economy. Poverty is common in Africa. Poverty is common in Africa because uh, we are not growing the economy. Here we have a president that wants to grow the economy so that uh, the, the economy will be robust in mm -hmm. the way that uh, tax revenue will come in, in, in a new dimension, not using the whole dimension. For example, we can decide to look at uh, the tax subject. There are two ways of increasing tax revenue. Rather than going through tax rates, Nigeria's you can look at the tax subject. When you look at the tax subject, it means that you are looking for a new income that, has not, that is not within the tax net before. If you do so, the revenue will grow, my friend. Hmm. Interesting thing. That revenue thing remains very important at, at this time because government needs to. Uh, but let's, let's, let's talk about government spending on education. Everyone knows that Polytechnic, where you want to build sustainable job opportunities, is from the uh, Polytechnics. And, um, uh, you know, providing technological solutions also lies in that, that space. What's been happening around that space and how are you getting the rightful support from government? Well, uh, thank you, Tolu. You know, all over the world, polytechnic education is where we should go because we combine both theory and practical, particularly when you want the economy to grow. It's one thing for you to have the theory. Another thing for you is to be able to practicalize it. The attention we want from government is uh, more funding such that uh, we can generate uh, graduates that will not be a uh, job seeker, a job creator. You know, when you begin to go into school without, what can you do with your hand? How do you use your hand to do something? In the polytechnic education, what we do is to combine both theory and practical, so that when you leave our polytechnic, you become a uh, job creator. You are not looking for a job. For example, if you read mechanical engineering in our polytechnic, well, after graduation, graduating, you do not need to work anywhere. You can also have your uh, auto, 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 auto shop in such a way that you can begin to uh, open up the market, uh, get, 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 get people employed. 
get people into your workshop and rather than you looking for a job in this and all that, that's all we do in the Polytechnic. The, the, the basic point is that we need more funding. More funding around the corridor of electricity. You know, when you have electricity, for example, where we have our three phases machine, where we can also use electricity to power them, we are lacking in that. So we are calling on government to at least give us attention, give us funding so that we can produce quality graduates that can use their hand to do something in the economy. That's what we do in the Polytechnic, unlike in the other aspect of education that focuses on theory. We don't focus on theory, we combine both. Such as our graduates, when they leave the shore of our institution, they are, they are, they are job creators and they are everywhere, they are everywhere in, the, in the industry and they are doing very well, Tolu. Mm. Very interesting, interesting stuff. Now, let's come back to uh, government and some moves being made lately by President Bola Ahmed Tinumbo. Analysts like you have said, bold steps, you know, looking at unifying the currency, looking at, you know, suspending some um, executive orders that mean negative to manufacturers and order. In your own assessment and understanding of what's been happening in less than two months, what sort of country are you seeing in a matter of months if things are done right? Uh, the country we are seeing in these recent days, it, may, it gives us joy because uh, the President Abola Ahmed Tinumbu hit the ground running by taking courageous decisions in terms of suspending uh, subsidy, subsidy and also unification of exchange rate. You know that uh, I used a language earlier and I said you need to grow the economy. If you want to grow the economy, if you want to remove poverty in this economy, you need to grow the economy. For you to grow the economy, you need to take away certain things that are like uh, cancer, there are cancer in the body, and uh, you need surgical operation to remove that cancer. Once that is removed, you grow the economy, tax revenue begins to come in and all that. I heard you talking about investment. Let me tell you, efforts have been made over the years that investment should come through capital flow, inflow and all that. Why that one has not been really uh, be positive was because one, let me tell you, Tolu, money is a coward. Mm. Money only stays where there is security. Yeah. Uh, we want, you want investment where there is no security. No one in the world wants to put his money where there is no security. So this president is saying that uh, by also unifying the exchange rate, by suspending subsidy, you want to look at security such that uh, international investors can bring their money here and that before you know it, you grow industry. And when you grow the economy, then you cannot begin to look after the tax revenue. Don't forget that I told you earlier on that. By coming in, by using tax, you know, fiscal policy, you're talking about fiscal policy, you do not need to use uh, existing tax to tax, we don't, we don't need to tax Nigerian out of their wood. We need to, what we need to do is to create new income that has not been the dragnet before. And how do we do that? When you grow the economy, you can begin to see more taxes coming. For example, what is stopping us from taxing luxury? Nigerian like to use uh, iPhone, iPhone 14, iPhone this, iPhone that. <laughs> if I you want to build uh, 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 very big houses, uh, to what extent are we looking at that by taxing social, 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 social and income? A Nigerian that has a, a jetty, a jetty uh, in Victoria Line there, what, what, how much does it pay as tax? So we need to begin to look at new horizon to taxation, not necessarily looking at the existing Task, uh, task, 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 uh, task, uh, task, uh, task, uh, Some will say we should incorporate the informal sector into it so very well. Yes, of uh, course. We are yet to do that. I spoke to the FRS about this, and they're also saying that they're doing a lot to start to bring in these guys in the informal sector to make more money from them. What is your reaction? Yeah, a very good one, because if you look at the way that our task is, uh, the informal sector pay less tax in Nigeria. If you, if you have been to UK, Ordinary shop, wherever, if you buy anything you buy there, you are paying tax almost instantly. To what extent are we taxing the informal sector in Alaba market, in uh, Bodija market, and all that? The, there are a lot of business activities that are going on there, escaping tax. So we, we are saying that uh, all those areas, by the time we make our revenue, uh, revenue structure robust, those dragnets will be, will be in Alaba market. So that when you buy anything in Alaba market, it's been taxed almost immediately. The same thing as we are in uh, maybe Bodija market, as we are in Nigeria and other. So the informal aspect of taxation, we need to look at it because there are a lot of money that are there that are, escape, that are escaping tax liability. And that's what I'm saying that we need to look at the tax object. We look at the tax object and looking at the tax rate. If you look at the tax rate, what you are saying is that you are going to tax Nigeria. But let's look at other taxes, other income that are really escaping the, the dragnet, and that's what the, 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 the we should do as a government, and so that 
all income at least will enter that dragnet so that we have more revenue to finance government expenditure. I am aware that professionals like you always want government to bring professionals in, in governance. I know the Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria, which ICANN is also a member. You know, they have all of the associations. But my question really to you is, what is your message to government about getting the round peg in the round hole, square peg in the square hole, regards to appointments and regards to involving professionals in carrying out financial activities, infrastructure activities, all of it? What is your take with regards to that? Well, my take is that uh, let me start this way by commending our, pres our dear president because the appointment he has made so far in yeah. terms of uh, the quality of human capital has engaged shows that we have hope in this country. Professionals should be engaged in the, in the business of running government. For example, if you, yes, of course, there must be a balance. You must strike a balance between uh, the use of uh, politicians and the, the professional. Professional is the one that will run the government. Yes. It's the one that will provide avenue, it's going to provide brains. They are going to look at the highs to highs, on high to high of the president to tell him the truth, that this is how we can grow the economy. It's only when you grow the economy that, like I said, we can uh, eliminate poverty. And who can grow it is the professional in terms of how do we generate revenue? What kind of uh, task law do we come with? How do we at least eliminate what we call uh, the canker worm of multiple taxation that is actually destroying the, 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 the what you call the small business, the small businesses that have been taxed, their income have been taxed more than twice all over. All over. How do we do that? It's professional that can eliminate that. So I want to commend the president by at least so far so good the appointment has made, showing that uh, he needs to professional to look at his eyes, tell him the truth on the way to grow the economy, on what aspect of taxation do we come up with, which one do we remove such that Nigerians at the end of the day will be happy in this democracy. Mm. In, interesting conversation, I, I must say. Let's come back again to, to the school, to the school environment, uh, because there's always that relationship between <laughs> that and the school environment and, of course, the business environment. Now, what more or what conversation do you think we need to be having uh, at this time to bring our students up to speed with technological innovations that we see? Everyone believes that our technology is the way to go. I uh, see what is happening everywhere, and we know that that is how well are we doing our polytechnics with, with regards to technological innovations? So you are very correct. Education has positive correlation with development. Mm. And that, uh, you know, if you look at it, when we got independence in 1960, compare ourselves with uh, countries like uh, Malaysia today, Singapore, South Koreans, and all that. When we got independence, those countries were miles away to us. But today, those countries have left us. Why? They have invested massively in education. If you look at uh, development, you can see that uh, now we are talking about uh, liberal capital. Now we are not talking about knowledge economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the amount of money you put into education that will drive the economy. If you want to, we are, not talking, we are no longer talking about economy that has been driven by natural resources. Economy has been driven by, uh, today by knowledge. For example, look at a country like Singapore. Singapore has, uh, has no natural resources, but yet uh, they, they, are, they are able to sustain their economy through what we call knowledge. So what we are saying is that as this present is, 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 is moving on, we are saying that uh, more money should be invested in education so that we can also have technology. You know, I talked about earlier on about electricity. Yes. Uh, electricity should be provided in, in almost every institution so that we can drive development. We can do things that you can innovate. You can come up with ideas. Even if you cannot innovate, you can replicate ideas. Ideas can be replicated. We cannot replicate ideas if, if we don't have electricity. But bulk of the challenges most is sure in Nigeria have is the, 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 the electricity on campus. How do we have electricity? How do we have Wi-Fi on campus? Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that uh, the students that are, we are training have, uh, have opportunity to have access to technology? For example, when, we, when I was in the university, I, never, I didn't see anything like computer. Yes. Can we train the students like that today? Wow. That uh, students will be, will be graduating <laughs> in, in Nigeria Not University of Polytechnic without no, even having, having access. Student. No, even a primary school student now. When even in UK, you know, Tolu, that they normally operate, they give, they give assignments yeah, through, yeah, through, through internet through and even yes. primary school. Yes. How much more we are talking about yes. our Polytechnic and yes. university. So what we are saying is that more money investment should be directed to education. Because if we invest, we have quality 
citizen. When you have quality citizen, citizen, there is every likelihood that the welfare of those citizens will change. So uh, in this direction, once we make more money, more money should also be given to education so that we can give quality education to our to Nigerian undergraduates. Hmm. Very interesting thing. Uh, what would be your message now I mean, to chartered accountants, to professionals at uh, this time? Because there's also one worry. Many believe that professionals don't always want to, they always want to be behind the scenes. They don't want to come out to talk. Only a few of you see you all out. We think more professionals should also come out and engage and speak. Even, for example, Tawo Yedili that has been appointed, he works with PwC. He's been out talking, and I think government has said, this guy knows what he's talking about. But what more would be your advice to professionals that sit back and criticize and don't come out to say, government, you can do it this way. What do you make of so that? So, you are very correct. The era of Sidon look is, we are not in the era of Sidon look. Professionals should come out and advise this government because this is the last hope we have. Mm. Our last hope is in this man called President, President uh, Ahmed Chinumbu. He has to do it well. Who is going to guide him? It's the professional, like us, accountants, uh, bankers, uh, the financial gurus. We needed to give him advice in the way that he's going to pilot this uh, affair of this country afloat of his responsibility. So the person rather than sitting down at the corridor of their uh, bedroom, not talking to people, not talking and not giving advice that you think are quality, we should. We should come out even to the television sometimes we can like to discuss like, with you, share idea in a way that we, because this country is a potential, it has a lot of potential. Mm. There are so many potentials untapped. It is the time to tap that potential. That's what we are saying. And if you sit down at the corridor of our room, those potentials will not be tapped. That's what we are saying. So we are saying that professionals across whether the Medical Association of Nigeria, the accountants, the lawyers, and we need to come up and be talking so that because this country has a lot of opportunities and we need to tap into it. We, can, we cannot sit down and be complaining that this country is poor, is this, and we need to move away from poverty. We are not destined to, poor, to be poor because God pampered this country by giving us a lot of human capital resources and natural resources. If they are well tapped across nooks and crises of Nigeria, I think Nigeria will be better for it. And I think where we are going is that if, if we give this, uh, this president time, prosperity will be for all. Because the era of poverty, I'm, I'm thinking, is bye-bye. Because we are taking courageous decisions that will eliminate that poverty. And this is the first time in Nigeria that we are taking such a bold uh, decision. It's a good way to leave it. I must thank you so much for your time. I have been speaking to the rector of the Federal Polytechnic, Ilaro, uh, there, um, Dr. Mukail Aremo Akinde. He is a fellow of the Chartered Accountants of Nigeria and is also the chairman of ICANN District, Ilaro uh, District Society, as it's called yeah. uh, over there. Thank you so thank much you, for your time. You, I hope you, to have you again on the program. Thank you. All right, thank yeah. you. You are, you are wonderful. All right.